Welcome back. We're glad to have you back, and I hope you still have your pads and pencils, because now we're moving on to the second part, and this is where we're going to be talking about nuclear waste transportation and transportation safety. And my guest this time is Michael D'Alessio, and he's also with an advisory board that talks about nuclear waste, so this is the perfect person to come and talk to us today. So Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. I know you have a lot of charts and you have a lot of information you like to share with us. And I want to jump right in there, but first I, I do want to say something about a couple other things. And one is we have a blood drive coming up, and the blood drive is through the Rotary Club of Pahrump, and I, I want to talk about that just very quickly. That's on Friday and Saturday, November 13th and 14th. And for every donor, they'll receive a $10 Amazon card for every donor that comes in. And I wish you could see it on the screen, but you can call 702-233-9620 if you'd like to be a donor, and they'll schedule your appointment. We've got a couple other things we'll talk about later, but we want to get back to, to Michael and talk about nuclear waste transportation and transportation safety. So how do you want to start this, Michael? Um, if you have some questions or some concerns that have been brought up to you, I can start with discussing that, and then we can talk a little bit more about uh, what the board does and how some of these things work. Well, let me say that we have some people in the town of Pahrump that have always stated that transportation and transporting nuclear waste through our town is dangerous. And it's so dangerous, and people are, are afraid of, of just having the, trans the trucks come through. I'd like you to tell me, how safe is this, and are we really having any problems? Well, uh, the transportation is extremely safe. Um, the transportation of radioactive materials is far safer than some of the other things that we see all the time, like ammonia gases and chlorine gases. Okay. Those are far more dangerous for transportation. Um, the materials that get transported here through the Pahrump area are low-level mixed waste. So they're extremely safe in that they're very low-level. Okay. Now, if, if you want to talk about what goes on, um, the Department of Transportation regulates all hazardous material, and they have safety uh, programs in place. Um, every you have, company. You have, you have some charts to show us some of this, I, don't you? I have some charts. I can show you uh, some information about uh, what people normally see as transportation semi trucks. Um, these are the kinds of things that people normally see coming through town here. Okay. And um, all of these containers that you see this material in are rated containers. They're uh, Department of Transportation uh, requirements as to how safe these containers are. And if you look at what low-level radioactive waste is, for the most part, it's trash. It is materials that may have been contaminated over time f through facilities that have dealt with radioactive materials. Okay. So it's not um, the radioisotopes that you would normally see, <laughs> okay? It's something that may have been contaminated, so it has to be disposed of in a safe in a safe manner. So it could be uniforms, it could be equipment, it could be It anything. could be a truck, it could be a computer, um, it, in many cases, is dirt. Okay. It's just, so it's not what people may think of uh, leftover nuclear bomb or something of that nature. Gotcha, okay. And so, um, as added security, all of these companies have their own internal security plans, which all of their drivers are trained, uh, things to look out for, places to park, um, things to do, and then a plan if they should notice something. Uh, there's phone numbers, there's places that they can contact to get help if they think that they need that. Okay. And um, I, I just would like to say one thing. Uh, I'm sure people have seen chlorine 
uh, problems where trains have disrailed and things, and they evacuate for miles and miles away. Yes. I don't know that we've ever seen a radioactive or some waste uh, accident that has gotten the national news or any kind of, of uh, notoriety that some of these other things have had. So the safety, if you think about it, when you look at gases and other hazardous materials that are shipped, the radioactive materials are far safer. You don't see these accidents and they're not um, publicized. If they were, I'm sure they would get much more publicity than... Well, absolutely. And I, I like the way you say that because, again, I'm going to ease the, the minds for the people in Pahrump. Plus the fact that you're from Pahrump. So you're very I, concerned about this too. I am. And part of the reason I became a member of, this, of the board was because I live in this area and I want to have a voice as to what things occur here. So that was part of the reasoning for me to do that. I also um, have experience in transportation of materials, so I have another side where I've been trained, so I know okay. the kinds of training that takes place for people to do that. And um, the other thing that people don't realize, we saw some of those vehicles that we normally see um, radioactive material on, mm -hmm. but. No one ever talks about medical radioactive. That's true. That's true. You go to a hospital, and a hospital does testing. They do, um, if they give you a heart test where they inject you with a radioactive dye. Yes. How do you think that dye gets to that hospital or to that medical ah, place? Never thought of that. It's in a van or an automobile or something that drives next to you on the roadway or whatever. Okay. So. I want people to understand that the transportation of radioactive material is far greater than just what we see our trucks coming through here. And the trucks that you see here have far more training. They have uh, far more regulations. Uh, the containers and so forth that they're transported in are far safer and okay. better. So, um, and, um, so that maybe brings us to another point, which is Station 51 here in Pahrump. And I don't know if people realize, but we have a emergency technical response team here that is extremely well trained in hazardous material responses. Okay. To the point that um, the government and the transportation industry, they have training films where they train other emergency response uh, departments throughout the country. And our Station 51 and our Pahrump Valley Fire Department was chosen here some time ago to be the department that they used for a training film here because of the level of training that our departments here have. They were chosen to use our department to film this training film this to is, train this is outstanding. other people. This is so, outstanding, and I, I know the people of Pahrump and Nye County want to hear about this because there's safety in this. There is, and if there were an incident here, I am extremely confident that this department would be able to handle it as well as anyone in the country because of the training that we have here. So okay. um, that's another part that's, that's um, important. And um, just so people understand, um, just where all this material comes from, we have a, um, a, a map here of the United States. Well, that's a, um, a slide of what uh, the kinds of containers and, and where uh, this material, there's 41 DOE generators, and just so people understand, all of the material that comes here is Department of Energy uh, material. So there's no commercial waste, there's no, nothing that comes from outside of U.S. government materials. So that's the only material that comes here is U.S. government materials. And then there, um, you can see by this map here where materials are transported all the way across the country and so 
it's not something that's locally here. It ends up here, but it travels across all these public highways um, to get here to the country. And then um, there's a statistic here from um, 2010 to 2014, and 74% of this uh, material here has come through Pahrump on Highway 160. So even though there's a lot of material that's come here, it's very safe. We've had a lot of um, training here for our local people that come here. And uh, I don't see where there's a really big issue. And, and you're talking about low-level waste. This is extremely low-level waste. Okay. This is like getting an x-ray. If, if you fly a lot, if you travel on an airplane for business and you're always traveling, your exposure to radiation is far greater than anything that you would get from what travels through Perup. Okay. So, um, and uh, if people would like to get some more information. Um, this is the uh, information here for uh, the NSAB board. Uh, we are currently in a um, um, looking for new board members. This, this year, we're adding some more board members. So if someone is interested, if you really want to know about what's going on, you should get involved. Come to our meetings. There's meetings every other month. If you go to this website, you can see the meeting schedule. And um, this phone number is the phone number that goes to the NSAB board. If, you, if someone needed to reach me or wanted some more information, I'd be more than happy to speak to anyone one-on-one, -on -one, um, get you some more information, and get involved. Find out more directly what's going on as opposed to what your next-door neighbor or the guy across the street <laughs> Absolutely. or somebody who you met in the grocery store told you. Okay, so, Michael, how long have you been on this advisory board? Um, the, I'm going on my second year on the advisory board. Um, I'm very interested in what goes on here. Uh, the advisory board makes recommendations to the Department of Energy about changes or things that they feel are more important for the protection and safety of the citizens of Nevada. And my goal is for the safety of the citizens of Pahrump. So they do take our recommendations. They do act on them. Uh, so this is not just lip service. There is a lot of good that comes from what the advisory board gives as recommendations. Well, Michael, thanks again for being a guest on the show. And uh, we may have to bring you back another time to give us a complete update. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Okay.